I have the omnibus! That's right. You knew I had to do it. It had to be done. I freaking finally got He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Omnibus. Somehow it got lost in transit, but now it's at my house. I finally get to read it. So join me as I look over this wonderful omnibus that just came in. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's look at this big, thick book. And I mean thick. Boy, this thing is thicker than a snicker. Uh, let me compare it really quick to another thick book. Not quite as big as The Final Crisis, but almost 1,500 pages is what's contained in this big, massive omnibus. So, I like them big. You all know that. So that's why I was like, yes, I'm so glad I waited on the trade paperbacks. I read a lot of these in single issues. Um, let's look at the back here. And I was so excited when they announced this omnibus. More excited that they didn't freaking cancel it because of all the DC crap that's been going on lately. Uh, let's go ahead and take this out. By the way, the cover, that is, uh, it's issue one. Philip Tan did that. Um, and then this wonderful inside cover here. I've already cracked this sucker open because I started reading the issues I had not read yet. This book contains a crap load of books in here. So let's take a look at this. And let's look at the build of the book. Because with a book like this, we always worry about that spine. We don't need that spine to bust. And we also don't need a freaking mousetrap like Infinite Crisis, the first printing. So let's look at it. Okay, as you can see, it lays over fine. It's got a pretty nice eye right there. It is glued binding, not sewn. I guess with a book this thick, it has to be. And let's look at it. It's, yeah, lays over nice. It is enclosing. Like I said, I was reading it yesterday when I got it in the mail and didn't give me any problems of course i was reading it in the bed and then i also set up with it because that's the way i read these manly books by holding them up this thing weighs a lot not as bad as the colossal conan but all right let's look inside of the book and see what the contents are let's crack this sucker open um right off the bat by the way yesterday i noticed my printing had this little bubble here which not that big of a deal you know not enough for me to send it back but i can see why people some people would Nice cover art with the credits right there, the table of contents. I'm glad they did that because as you know, DC doesn't print the issue numbers right here. Uh, table of contents, a lot of freaking books kicking it off with the Lost Night story by Jeff Johns and art by Howard Porter, the guy that did JLA, who almost wasn't going to be drawing comics anymore because I think he was losing his sight or something had happened to Howard Porter. It's a short story. I think it was only available through digital print. And then issue one. And James Robinson's, yeah, the guy that kicked it off with Philip Tan on artwork. So let's look at this really quick without giving too much away. If you're a fan of He-Man from your childhood days, then this is the book for you. If I could compare it to anything, it would be, I guess, something like the relaunch of Power Rangers or maybe the Transformers or TMNT IDW book. Because it's more adult-oriented. There's a lot of death, a lot of... Uh, a lot more violence than there could be in the comic book. Oops, spoilers. Prince Adams becomes He-Man, huh? Nobody saw that coming. Gorgeous covers, too. Um, however, each chapter is laid out in the back, like, with who wrote it and who the artist is inside. By now, Keith Giffen is writing it. Taking over. I think James Robinson only did, like, two issues. And Philip Tan only did, I think, six issues. Like, the first six mini. And then Pop Man did the rest of the series. Mostly, like, this is mostly Pop Man's artwork. Then we have the one-shots. Okay, so what does it contain? Well, let's look at that. I love the variety in artwork. Uh, so, this collects He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the first series, like I said, issues 1 through 6. Uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the second series, issues 1 through 19. He-Man, the Eternity War, which is 15 issues long. So all 15 issues are included in here. Masters of the Universe, the digital chapters 1 through 8. Damn, that's a lot of digital chapters. I didn't realize there were that many. Because I had not read some of those. Masters of the Universe Origin of He-Man number one. Masters of the Universe Origin of Hordak number one. Masters of the Universe Origin of Skeletor number one. The DC Universe versus Masters of the Universe number one through six. He-Man and the Thundercats one through six. And the one that actually shocked the hell out of me that is included in here is the DC Comics Presents number 47 which we'll look at that here in a little bit. Uh, the special Masters of the Universe preview and Masters of the Universe 1, 2, and 3 from 1982. 
the the original He-Man stories from DC. Those are the ones that shocked me that are included in here. Now, if you are a fan of the series, you already know what's not included in here, and that is the Injustice versus Masters of the Universe six issue series. Now, I don't know if like the uh, DC Universe versus Masters of the Universe, if it's canon or not. I'm not sure, but I do know a lot of characters die in that series. So I'm not sure why they decided not to include it in the omnibus. Then, it, then you were looking at probably the biggest omnibus, or at least for me, the biggest omnibus I would own. Uh, retail price of $150, but you could still get it at on Amazon or IST for cheap, or a lot cheaper than that. But that's still a big chunk of change. So who is this book for? I would say if you're a fan of Conan, if you like Cole, if you like those type of stories, this is more like that than the uh, hokey cartoon. Yes, I grew up on that cartoon, but it was still kind of hokey at times. Come on, He-Man in the She-Ra Christmas episode. Oh, oh I, I don't think I feel well. Well, I think you're feeling the Christmas spirit, Skeletor. Need I say more? But this is more of a serious adult tone to those stories. Like I said, a lot of characters die within these pages. A lot of beloved characters a lot of betrayals, and a lot more violence. Um, or you, if you did watch this growing up, then you get a lot of recognizable characters like Trapjaw, Triclops, He-Man, Tila, uh, the Sorceress, Duncan, oh, Man-at-Arms, sorry. Uh, She-Ra makes an appearance, of course. And then, of course, the Hordak and all his crew, the Serpent people. Like, remember that from later on uh, in the series? By the way, let's actually, let's go back here for a second because I love these little one-shots. They're not written by the regular crew. Actually, as a matter of fact, I think Kyle Higgins wrote some. Mike Costa from IDW wrote a bunch. Like, you have the Duncan Duncan one-shot, uh, Evil Lynn, Randor. You have the Origin of Skeletor, which is kind of tragic. You have the Orko story. I think I was flipping through there earlier to look at the art. Uh, Trap Jaw, which has a kind of a messed up story. I like that. Uh, here's the Origin of Skeletor. Skeletor, is it? Or Oh, this is the origin of Skeletor. Yeah, this one's messed up and dark, and I loved it. Don't want to flip through there, because I want you guys to actually experience it. It's so freaking awesome. Uh, let's look a little more through here. So different artwork, and you also get new characters. Like, uh, what's her name here? Despara. And a lot of recognizable characters, too, that I was talking about earlier. And it's got, actually, pretty kick-ass artwork for most of the time. Like I said, I think about 85% of the book is drawn by Pop Man. Yeah, this guy right here. Now, Dan Abnett is now co-writing it. He probably writes about 60% of the book, this huge omnibus. Dan Abnett, of course, being one of the DNA guys from the Cosmic Saga at Marvel and co-wrote it with Rob David. Rob David, of course, being the head of Mattel. He's in charge of their marketing. So it's pretty interesting to see him writing this because he comes from the toy end of things. Hey, that's awesome. I'm gonna not going to discredit him because a, a lot of the stuff that I read in here were done by him. And, of course, keep, uh, Dan Abnett on script. And let's look a little more through here. I mean, this is some kick-ass stuff. So if you grow up with these characters, they're already recognizable to you. They don't act the same, of course. Skeletor is more of a badass and less of a joke. Uh, Beastman, Evil Lynn is all still hot as hell. Uh, Randor. Yeah, so you get all these classic characters back in here, which makes it awesome for those people with nostalgia. And if you've never seen the show, it's more like a Conan story than anything. Um, not as graphic or gory, but I think almost just as fun. And it's all in here because you don't need the Injustice versus Masters of the Universe book. Let me flip a little more through here and talk... Um, yeah, there's Duncan. The Serpent people was what really shocked me. Actually, there's so many freaking cameos in here. And a lot of the characters, I couldn't even remember their name from my childhood. I was like, well, who is that guy? He looks familiar. And I used to have their toy. And eventually, I'm like, oh, that's what he looks like. So, many faces. Who doesn't remember that guy? Yeah, I don't want to flip here because I didn't read that yet. So, let's look at this wonderful artwork by Freddie Williams. The second um, this is the Thundercats He-Man six-issue series. Man, I love this guy. This is the guy that did the recent TMNT Batman crossovers, um, the two series. He used to draw Robin. I really like his art style. Now it's a lot more detailed, less cartoony. Eh, it's still cartoony, but, I mean, look at the amount of detail you get. The art is gorgeous in this. I am so glad they included this in here. I'm glad they included a lot of stuff. 
And yes, for nostalgia purposes, I used to have these issues back here too. So I'm so glad they included them in the back of the book because I didn't know about these. I didn't know they were going to include the classic issues. These were the ones that were released, I want to say like right before the TV series was out. So this is around 1982 is when these came out. And it was only three issues and then the DC Comic Presents. Um, and back here we have lots of sketches and character designs. Um, the book itself is right under... I want to say 1,500 pages. It's not quite 1,500. Here, let's look at let's look at this. This is the extra stuff that I love looking at. So, variant, yeah, variant covers, gorgeous covers. That one there is by Dave Wilkins, who did Wilkins, uh, the cover to inside of the book. And let's look through here. Toy. I never did like those toy variants, but hey, whatever. The late Darwin Cook even did a variant cover. The stuff that's not collected in here, though, are some of those image books, of course. Now, I mean, they wouldn't collect them. They're out of continuity. They're not even in the same universe. Uh, character designs here by Freddie Williams. A lot of character designs and uh, some unused artwork. Oh, man. Battle Cat looks so badass. Yeah. The same reason I love... Let's just look at that. That That's amazing. Look at the amount of detail Freddie Williams put on that. The same reason I love the new IDW Ninja Turtles and the new IDW Transformers and G.I. Joe. And eh, G.I. Joe, not as much. But Ghostbusters, if they were to reprint those damn hardcovers, um, that's the reason I picked this up. And that was everything included in this omnibus. So if I talk to you into buying it, let me know in the comments down below. If not, I saved you some money. So there you go. Because it is $150 retail price. Again, this was Omar. And please remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint. Have a great day.